Yes, yes, guys, everything bite-sized here with some more shitty, probably fake internet stories, but interesting nonetheless. So I'll just treat this all as fiction and um, we're going to break it down and take the piss out of each story unless unless they seem like they might be true or there's some truth in them. But yeah, let's, let's dive in. This is an article by ThoughtCatalog.com and it's called True Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. So um, it's obviously going to be cheesy as fuck, you can tell straight away. So, this one's called Making Toast. Making toast late one night, facing the kitchen bench, eating for a good five to ten minutes, cleaned up and turned around and every single cupboard door and cutlery drawer were open. They were all closed when I went into the kitchen and there was no one who could have snuck in and done it because I was home alone. I also didn't hear them open in the time I was there. Scared the shit out of me so I froze, let it register for a few seconds, then calmly closed everything and went back to my room to hide until daylight. One of the few weird things to happen growing up. Yeah, that's just like a stereotypical poltergeist story you'd see on a movie. Like, that's not even that creative. I'll tell you what though, if that did actually happen, if that happened to me, that would scare the shit out of me. You wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to sleep in that house. Like, that's the thing. If that happened to anyone, I doubt they'd sleep that night. So that's bullshit. Because like, come on, if you're in, if you're in your kitchen, yeah, and suddenly a fucking poltergeist opens everything, um, silently without you knowing you turn around you're either going to think you're going completely bonkers and insane and stay up all night thinking that you've suddenly developed schizophrenia or you're going to think there's actually a poltergeist or someone who's snuck in your house and like a ninja and fucking either way it's bad news and you ain't sleeping that night so that's bullshit let's go to the next one pig mask our old house was on a corner and in lieu of a backyard had a side yard with a small deck that wrapped around the back. The dining room had patio doors that led out to the back and we would have barbecues and such back there. <laughs> that sounds like butters off the south part very much so <laughs> very much and such back there when i was around 14 we only had one desktop computer and one laptop for the family i remember those times i remember those times in the 90s my brother and i would fight over the desktop see <laughs> that's what me and my brother used to do me and my brother used to fight over that shit like trying we both wanted to play runescape we both wanted to play uh neopets um you know, and we'd, we'd argue over it. Anyway, uh, uh, in parentheses, that's where Diablo 2 was installed. So I'd use the laptop to write music. Um, on one particular night, my brother had a friend over and they were downstairs doing whatever. And I was at the dining room table on the laptop. As I was wrapped up in my writing, I didn't pay attention to my surroundings. I heard a knock on the patio door, which startled me. I looked up, expecting my brother or his friend, parentheses, the basement had a door that led to the back deck as well. Standing at the door and waving was a person, parentheses, could not tell sex or age, wearing a Halloween pig mask. Oh my gosh, that is scary as fuck. I, I, like, people will do that sort of shit to other people just to get kicks out of it as well. That is scary. Standing at the door and waving was a person, parentheses, could not tell sex or age, wearing a Halloween pig mask. Thinking it was my brother or his friend, I mouthed, good one, and gave the person the finger, and they walked away. <laughs> this sounds true. As soon as they left, I went downstairs to give them shit, and to my surprise and dismay, they were both sitting on the couch playing PlayStation. They swore up and down it wasn't either of them, and there was no way one of them would have had time to get downstairs and unmask before getting on the couch. To this day, I have no idea who it was that knocked and waved. That sounds like a right creepy fucking voyeurism weirdo who, who gets off on scaring the shit out of people and looking at them when they're um when they're not aware that is weird see that is believable i actually believe that like it's out it's the kind of thing that sounds like you know like it just sounds real to me that's scary let me have a vape that one is fucking bonkers this is really short last day on earth i worked from 2 p.m to 11 p.m. at a gas station in one of the nicer cities around here and I had a gentleman <laughs> look at me in the eyes and ask me if I'm enjoying my last day on earth. Walked away before I could answer. Whoa, that is fucking scary, man. Someone coming up to you and saying, are you enjoying your last day on earth and then just walking off? That sounds like some, 
Oh, that sounds scary. That gave me shivers, that did. I can believe that. There's a lot of weirdos out there who will just want to trip people out and, you know, like, oh, that's, that's, so, do you know what? Some of these might be true, like, for real. There's 67 of these bitches. Like, honestly, like, I don't know how many I took screenshots of, but, like, let's work, let's work for all of them in a marathon, shall we? Yeah. Like, so this one's called I'm Still Here. I came home pretty late one night and my roommate's bedroom was shut and I assumed she was sleeping already but I saw something out the corner of my eye in the kitchen. I said her name but she didn't answer. I didn't think anything of it so I walked into my room and before I turned the light on something whispered I'm still here. I turned on the light in my room but nothing was there so I turned on every light in my house and knocked on my roommate's door and eventually opened it but she wasn't there so I left her light on too and slept with all the lights on. When she came home the next morning I asked her if she was messing with me and she started crying and said she left because something was in the house messing with her and she had to get out. Ooh, that's creepy man. See I believe that paranormal events can happen you know. Um, but I also believe the mind is a very powerful thing and can, you know, you can even have group hallucinations and group trips. That is pretty scary. I want to read it back out, but, um, you know, there's too many stories. Let's go on. Raising a serial killer. Oh, my word. This is going to be bad. We, parentheses, me, my wife and my three-year-old son are sitting at, in the food court at Costco. There is another... What the fuck is Costco? Is it like a supermarket? I don't know. There is another family with a four to five-year-old girl sitting behind us. My son looks at me and says, Do you see that girl over there? I'm going to teach her a lesson. What? This is a three-year-old. So I'm taken back for a second. Then I think he must intend to teach her numbers or some other normal thing you teach people. So I ask what he is going to teach her. His response, I'm going to teach her to drown. What? Yeah, you are raising a serial killer. Unlucky. Um, right, I'm gonna have a vape after every story. Give me a chance. I'll get out of breath as well. I might have to have a piss break, you know. I mean, there's so many stories, I might have to make a bowel movement. Like, honestly. Right, <laughs> this one is titled, just ominously <laughs> and, and concisely, they knew. That doesn't sound good. That's very foreboding, that is. So, a family friend of mine used to work in private wealth management. One of her jobs was diversification of her clients' assets on the stock market. Out of nowhere, she gets a call from a representative of one of her very big private clients to sell all the stocks of a big airline and move the liquidity somewhere else. No buts, and if needed, they could sell up to 5% below market as long as the shares are sold quickly. That's weird. Oh yeah, that's what she goes on to say, or he goes on to say. This was extremely weird, as the stock price of the company was pretty stable. And specifically, this client's portfolio was heavily hedged with this stake, but she didn't think much of it. Oftentimes, her clients did this for personal reasons, such as having a bad experience on a plane of the company, or etc. Two days later, one of her colleagues that she shared this peculiar story told her with how the airline stock price started slowly but surely falling. Some people were selling off their shares too, which were gladly bought by the market at increasing prices. The next day, AA Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York. The stock market was closed for another week. Okay, so if I understand that properly, there's a lot of uh, financial jargon in that, um, which some of you might not understand. Um, but because I've traded uh, cryptocurrency, I kind of get it. But at the same time, it still confused me a little bit. So by the sounds of it, someone someone had like a premonition or some shit, or they had insider trading knowledge, um, or even worse, they're a part of some conspiracy. Um, and they sold the stock because they knew it the, the plane crash was going to happen. And then they probably bought it back when it was at a low price. That is, um, see, that sounds believable. That shit happens like every fucking minute, especially in the UK and the US. That's like kind of believable. These, some of these are believable, you know. All right, this one's just called, hello, question mark. I went camping by myself in Maine. One night I woke up at like 3 a.m., <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> not, a, not being able to fall asleep, I just laid there listening to the woods. Then I heard a faint, hello, I was petrified. I felt so vulnerable in the tent. I never figured out what it was. So, I'm gonna read that again. I went camping by myself in Maine. One night I woke up at like 3 a.m. Not being able to fall asleep, I just laid there listening to the woods. Then I heard a faint, hello, 
I was petrified. I felt so vulnerable in the tent. I never figured out what it was. Yeah, that would scare the shit out of me too. The thing is, is that could just be a hallucination, mate. You might be suffering from like a mood disorder or, you know, like you're probably on drugs or some shit, you know, but anyway. Which means, obviously, that is still a true story. It's a real story. It's just, it's not a fucking ghost, probably. Anyway, would you like to come live in my basement? No, thank you. When I was 17 and worked in retail as a cashier, I had a very old couple come through my line buying a wok. The husband, who was at least 85, started making conversation with me about the wok and asked if I liked Chinese food. Yeah, I like Chinese. Do you want to go out with me to get some Chinese? He winks at me. N -n 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 no, sir. Oh, well. He looks a bit disappointed and turns back to look at his wife, who is on the phone with someone. Would you at least like to come home with me and live in my basement? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. No. <laughs> the rest of the transaction took place in terrified silence. His wife never said a word. I wondered to this day if he was trying to joke because he sounded so sincere, or if he was suffering from dementia or something else that made him not realise how creepy that sounds to someone young enough to be your great-grandchild. Wow, that is, um, yeah, I don't even want to touch that one. That's, that's scary. Um, it's like a minefield as well, like people like walking on eggshells. Um, oh no, this one's just called Followed. All right. <laughs> The summer after I graduated from high school, I left work early and went up to my parents' cabin in northern Michigan. Spent that night at the beach waiting on the sunset. Once the sun went down and it became nearly pitch black, parentheses, no light pollution, I got to my car and started driving down the highway, parentheses, M22. After about 10 seconds of being at speed, there was an older Tahoe, Tahoe? late 90s that started riding my ass and flashing its high beams so i got up to about 60 in a 45 they were still on my ass i tried to pull off the side road that my parents cabin is off of and they took the same turn this is scary man um i thought this seemed weird because there's only about 30 40 houses on the road so i went all the way to the end which is usually a dead end but leads to a maintenance area for the golf course nearby truck was still following me at this point i was freaking out because if i pulled into the house they'll know where we lived and they were still following close by that's a smart move you know not pulling into where he lived i i, I would have done the same thing i'm a paranoid guy and just because you're paranoid doesn't mean people ain't out to get you do you get me anyway I took a ton of random turns and the truck kept following every single turn for about 15 minutes. Oh, that's scary. I finally had the chance to make a turn with traffic going through the intersection that gave me a few seconds of a head start. Pulled down the side street, went up 100 yards, turned off all my lights and waited. Truck slowly drove by the perpendicular street and kept going. Does perpendicular mean like, um, you know, like parallel? Anyway, booked it home. Booked at home. Oh, booked means like uh, you re you go really fast, doesn't it? That's what it means in American, I think. You booked at home, pulled my car around the side away from the main road and pulled every curtain. For an 18-year-old, I was scared as hell that night. Yeah, I, I, anyone would be fucking scared. If anything, yeah, the older you are, the more scared you'd be at something like that because you're more aware of, you know, how fucked up the world is and how fucked up people can be. Do you know what? There's so many stories that this might have to be a multi-part video. I don't think I can physically or mentally get through all of these. This is going to affect my dreams as well, man. I swear. Anyway, I, I mean, what did I expect? Reading an article called 67 True Stories. It's true scary stories to tell in the dark. The thing is, I thought they were all going to be bullshit, man. Like, I thought they were all going to be unbelievable and I was going to laugh at them, yeah? But, like, they're fucking scary, for real. This one's called Bark. This actually happened fairly recently. I was home alone one day with my dog and two of my friend's dogs. Out of nowhere, they all started barking and looking up towards our loft. As they're quieting down, I hear someone... Loft means attic, by the way, uh, in American. As they're quieting down, I heard someone in mocking, calm tone say, Bark. They started going crazy again and decided it's time for... And I decided it's time for a long evening walk. So someone apparently... Some ghost said, like, bark, apparently. I mean, that's so weird that it's, you know, I don't know. That, that I'm not really convinced about that one. Right, I just need to fucking wet my lips and, and have a vape because this is exhausting. I wonder if I can get through the whole lot in a marathon and turn this into like a hour or two long video. Right. Lads and lasses, let's crack on. Wow, this I'm going to have to zoom into this one. Um, this one's really, uh, really long and looks kind of scary. 
Right, uh, it's called The Evil Twin. Oh, okay, let me have a vape, because this, 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 I, twin stuff freaks me out. Yeah, this, this sort of stuff freaks me out, mate. There's something eerie about twins, like, um, you know, like, there's just something, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I think some other people get a bit weirded out. And, and, and almost everyone will be like, you know, like at, at the very least um, fascinated by twins. Like I've only met a few twins in my, few pairs of twins in my life. But um, yeah, one, actually these two twins that I didn't know, but I knew of, one of them went the complete different way in life than the other one did. One of them was really successful and clean and sober. And one of them turned into a proper coke head. Like, um, so that's like, it, it, I don't know, man. That's weird. I think that um, you'd think they'd have similar trajectories and arcs in their life, but apparently not. Um, okay, the evil twin. New Year's Day, 1995. Fucking hell, I was only three years old in 1995. New Year's Day, 1995. I was in the middle of third year university and a bunch of friends had come down to visit me and my roommate for the festivities. We were all... Let me just check it's fucking recording because I'll tell you what, if I've been talking to myself this whole time, I am going to be so pissed. I always get paranoid about this. It's 16 minutes already. Oh my word. Okay, let's start again. The Evil Twin... New Year's Day 1995, I was in the middle of third year university and a bunch of friends had come down to visit me and my roommate for the festivities. We were all pretty hungover from drinking the night before. Oh man, I was hungover this morning and it was horrible. Um, anyway, and went out for the usual nice day out, a bit chilly, I don't feel so good. Post greasy breakfast hungover stroll around the neighbourhood. I like how that's written. Um, <laughs> we were all pretty hungover from drinking the night before and went out for the usual quote-unquote nice day out a bit chilly i don't feel so good post greasy breakfast hungover stroll around the neighborhood that's i think it's it's chili chili is like a british word isn't it do americans say chili when it's cold we say chappers sometimes as well or at least where i'm from down south um anyway Two of these friends were twin brothers. One of them we hung out with all the time. The other we'd just met for the first time. He was pretty normal the night before, joining in the, on the fun. But on this day, we were all hanging around the local basketball court, shooting hoops with an old basketball we found in the grass. And this twin brother kept following me around all over the place with the creepiest grin I've ever seen in my life, staring right into the nether regions of my soul the whole time. <laughs> Oh no, I'd back away and join the group again and he'd keep following me around. When we were walking to back to the apartment and it was just me and him walking down the sidewalk behind the group. Oh, it's American because they say sidewalk. And he moved over in front of me, stared at me with that creepy look again and fell down to his knees as if to worship me or something. I didn't know what to do. Dot, 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 dot. Quote, hey buddy, you all right? You all right? We're heading back now, right? And so on. He wouldn't say anything. He'd just be there on his knees looking at me with a clenched face and squinted eyes as if he was looking directly into the sun or something. Oh, that is weird, man. Later that day, my room... Oh, mate. Later that day, my roomie said he was tripping balls, so I thought nothing of it and moved on with my life. A few weeks later, we got a phone call from the twin brother we usually hung out with, and it turned out that this other twin brother went over to his aunt's place with a knife and stabbed her 14 times. She didn't die, but, you know, still pretty bad. Oh no, that is awful, man. Like, I, this is why you should stay away from drugs. If you watch my video about why drugs are bad, yeah, you'll see, you'll see why. Like, there's similar stories to that, but without the getting stabbed 14 times, but still pretty bad. Um, anyway, he had, he had even called the police before going because he knew he was going to do it, but he couldn't stop himself from doing it because you know the voices and so on. Wow. So he should not be taking drugs. Like, it sounds like he's a bit mentally ill anyway. Um, the, the ensuing court case was widely covered in the media as this was a regularly small, relatively smaller community where this sort of thing doesn't happen on a regular basis. I was reading one of the articles and one of the testimonies that, that, that his twin brother was severely schizophrenic and was hearing voices in his head. He, he believed, oh man, that's bad, and he taking drugs on top. Like, I think I've got schizophrenia, but I'm bipolar, and um, yeah, no, I don't, get, I don't get auditory hallucinations. I have a couple of times, but I get visual hallucinations. Um, uh, 
the idea of auditory hallucinations and voices scares me a lot more than the uh, visual hallucinations I get. Like, I will see someone out the corner of my eye or in a window or in a car that's not there or in my flat that's not there and then they'll disappear. And that scares me because that gets my fight or flight pumping and, um, and it takes a while to calm down from that. But yeah, like, um, so I can relate, but I don't get like, I, I, I've never like, you know, like felt like I have to harm anyone or anything like that. Um, that's that's what scares me about the voices thing because um, voices can tell you what to do like visual hallucinations can't so you know like that's kind of scary man like he believed to his very bones that his aunt was the devil and that he had been commanded by God to go and kill her wow um, wow so who was this quote-unquote God that told him to kill, go kill her. Well, as the newspaper article described, it was a guy in a group he hung out with on New Year's Day. Oh, so it's the guy who's right, writing this. Didn't take me long to realise that he was talking about me. This was 22 years ago. I know for a fact it was a mental illness, but just knowing that I had somehow, quote unquote, commanded him to go kill his aunt stays with me to this day. Oh, man. That... Woo! That, that was just intense do you know what i'm gonna have to make this a multi-part series i'm gonna leave it there because that story is intense and that's blatantly true like that stuff happens like fairly regularly um unfortunately like that's very very scary um wow i don't know what to say like that's kind of taken me aback like i'm um yeah i'm gonna leave it there you've been tuned in to everything bite size Go check out my music videos, go check out my shorts, go check out my other videos like this, and I'll catch you soon. Peace.